Well, we got us another classic matchup of two young men trying to make it up the ladder. We saw Mr. Litt several times now, and now we've seen Terry Ring for the second time. Him and Mike Howerton had a really, really tough match there a while back, this, uh, the last segment of uh, IWWA All-Star Championship Wrestling. And uh, clearly, Billy Litt is the fan favorite in this match. At that, you are, you are exactly right there. Mr. Parsons. The crowd leaves there's no question. Billy Litt is absolutely loved here in Circle, Ohio. Terry Ring, after putting that nose ring he gave Mike Howard, is going to give Billy Litt a run for his money, but it's clear what side the fans are in here with Mr. Electricity. Well, you know, we got this match right here, and right after this we got what I think is two of the best lady wrestlers in wrestling, and definitely one of the best ladies champions in all of professional wrestling. They're not one of those Monday Night Divas. They're really wrestling. And, uh, I mean, they're cute girls, but they're athletes first, divas later. Well, as you can see in a lot of the publications out in wrestling right now, Brittany Force finally getting the credit oh, she yeah, has yeah, for quite right. a while yeah. now. Her and another girl who's been here with us in the past, Casey Carlisle, getting quite recognition on the websites and in the, and in the magazines and everything, being regarded as two of the top girls here on this level of professional wrestling. Well, you know, our photographer, Nina, he's been taking a lot of good pictures that, you know, we've been sending in these magazines and, and they start looking at that and they go, my goodness, you know, you guys have got a bigger crowd and most independent wrestling promotions. You guys have got, you guys have got, you know, name wrestlers like Jim Duggan. But my goodness, the photography, the, the footage of the film, the the sounds of the DVDs and the, and, and, and the shows and stuff, it's a complete thing. You ring announcer, you know, here, once again, I'm blowing smoke for you. Sounds <laughs> like, you know, somebody out of Madison Square Garden or better, you know, so it, you know, the, the whole thing's coming together. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, Dave, I've been working with you now here for, I'd say, the last two years now. Yeah, about, about two, two and a half, two years. And it's, like a, that, it's yeah. amazing how the, the quality of the shows, the production of the shows, the talent on the shows continue to get better and better and better. Well, so tonight, we come in the Super Bowl High, to be honest with you. We're with Channel 5 here. They're, they're playing a, a show called Time, Time Machine, which is a, our older footage. And then we're going to have a new show coming on here in, in about four or five weeks. And these people, these guys have been so good from this Channel 5. They're filming this tonight. And I told him, I said, we just want to have a smaller, tight crowd here like we used to have in the old days. So the fans can, you know, come in here. They can see wrestling. Uh, we're in a, in a town where, you know, there's no way these big promotions would ever come into these towns. Very intimate show here tonight. Not to say that the fans are into it because they obviously are. It's going to sound a little different in front of 18,000 people rather than right, 700 certainly. people. But yes. it's, it's without a doubt, the passion of the fans, the, the emotion of the fans still here with us here tonight in Circle Well, these two guys look now like... They were tying in there a little tight. Now they're backing up. It looks like they're kind of playing a chess match here, like they're trying to figure out 
what the other guy's going to do and you know, what, what, how the other guy's strengths are in his balance. And now I think we're down to where you might see something happening here other than just you know, a little bit of talking to the crowd kind of thing. A little cat and mouse from Terry Yeah, Rick it really is. Terry. It really is. Trying to get Billy Lick to jump so Terry Ring can get that advantage, find that opening where Billy Lick can get distracted by the crowd. That would be That's an correct. great opening for yeah. Terry, though. Well, you know, we got, we got some interesting stuff coming up here later. We're talking about the Rock and Roll Express with Tommy Gibson, the nephew of Robert Gibson, taking on David Young and Sigmund. That's, oh, that's going to be, oh, geez, that's gonna be you know, not only a top independent team, but they're also a, a top team that's going to be rated with TNA. Uh, they're going to be going in there soon. Uh, David David Young had been there uh, about six years straight, and then he goes in and out now with them. And uh, he's going to stay under contract where he can also come to the independent matches and you know, be able to perform all over the country. And then we also have Ricky Morton. I mean, what can you say about Ricky Morton? He has more tag team wins than anybody in the history. And Robert would be too, but Robert don't always tag with Ricky anymore because of, you know, the age difference and things like that. I mean, Ricky, Robert has some trouble with his knees. He has more wins than any current tag team wrestler anywhere. And yeah. usually you can add up 10 or 12 guys and win be close to the wins that he's had in this business. Yes, I mean, Ricky is not the greatest tag team special of all time. One of the top two or three. Then the two comes to my name, Ole Anderson, because he did it not only with his brothers, but he did it with Stan Hansen, Ivan Koloff, and a lot of different people. Ricky had pretty much the same partner for a long time, and then you know, ventured into different partners, but it's always been pretty much the same style, and I agree with you. I'd say he's either number one or number two, him or Ole. And then up there as well with them. Another person who is no stranger to Ricky Moore in the Rock and Roll Trust, Bobby Eat is Yeah, there you go, too. Yes, that's true, wrestlers. too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to leave Bobby out. Very good man. With Dennis Condry, with Stan Lane, uh, yep. with uh, with Regal and Dave Taylor. Yep, that's right. With Blue Bloods. Great stuff there from them. And then he was in Smoky Mountain. Uh, he did a, he did a lot of, he, well, he, you know, like you said, Stan Lane. It was there, there, they, were, they were so tight together, him and Lane and him and Condry. They used to say, twin brothers of different mothers. Without a doubt. It's very rare to see great tag teams in wrestling today which is why it's so great to see here the new Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, team, it is. Teams yeah. like Sigmund and Young. And true tag teams. team wrestling, that's so gone now. I mean, the team part of the tag team wrestling is gone in a lot of the newer age type uh, promotions and, and even in the bigger promotions. Billy Lid here just did a nice leg scissors takedown type thing and rings out there trying to get his senses back together. But, you know, Billy Lit is somebody that, oh, my goodness, he can, he's going to get fractured to be... <laughs> Always worried about, oh, oh no. my, yeah, he goes, I knew, Billy's not afraid of anything, I mean, he does, I, I tell you, to the point of being dangerous, to himself, you know. Wow. But this young, young Terry Ring here, definitely in the area of Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, one of the can't miss prospects in the area. Yeah, you were telling me that earlier, and, and I, not that I didn't believe you, it's just I haven't seen him. He's Definitely. been up in more in the Pennsylvania area. Definitely somebody I've seen in my travels. He well. is going to be a top star. I mean, he's he's a contender, I'd say. I mean, he's... If he left him a year and a half inside of wrestling, he's already competed in Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia. Well, I just asked him a few brief things back there. You know, As he's he also, been, also been in Rochester, New York. He's Sorry, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Go ahead. Nashville, Tennessee, he's competed in. Um, Little Rock, Arkansas. So he's getting around. Yeah. Yes, very well traveled with someone of his age. Going out there, making everybody know Terry Ring is somebody you're going to have to watch for years to come. I was just talking to him briefly in the back, and you can tell he is somebody that is uh, competitive. You know, you, you can tell he's got a, he talked to me, but you can tell there's intensity there. His mom was elsewhere. He's thinking about the matches. Definitely somebody we're going to be seeing for many, many years here in wrestling. Recently, he was able to go out in the Ohio area, had a great match with Shark Boy, even though Terry in his young, up-and-coming days wasn't able to Beat Shark Boy because it's better there, better know how to right. do it. Exactly. Take and down I'll tell you what, losing one to the Shark Boy, and it just, you know, that ain't nothing. Uh, yeah. I mean, Shark Boy's been all around the big, big circuits for WCW, TNA, and losing a match to him certainly isn't something that you should uh, feel that bad about. It. I mean, I, I would say maybe a year from now, that man will be competing with all those kind of guys. Oh, I, without a doubt, without a doubt. And, you know, we are having a, uh, what they're going to call Division 2, not so much a cruiser weight or whatever, but it, it does have a weight limit, 230 and under. That we're going to be having a tournament for coming up. We're going to call it Division the Two. Guys? Yeah, so it's mainly the younger guys, and uh, we're having a few junior, what well, used to be called junior heavyweights or cruiserweights, like Brad Armstrong is one guy that we're talking about coming up with and uh, bringing up here. I mean, and, uh, and believe it or not, we've even talked to Dean Malenko, who wants to do a little bit of 
He wants to be in the tournament to see if he can win a big purse, you know. And uh, But these young guys here, I'm telling you, uh, it's like Brad Armstrong says, he's got to work out three hours a day to be able to compete with these guys because he's older now. He's in great shape. But there's nothing, I tell you, youth is something you can't buy. You know, yeah. you get it for a while, and that's it. You, you, you can't get it back either. And that shows the passion of Armstrong still wanting to be involved. Still oh, yeah. He's, uh, this with the young guys. I think he told me it was his 25th year. Somebody and that shows the dedication of someone who's been in that long, has been everywhere all around the world yep. as well, and still wants to be out there competing with the right. young He started at 17 years old. You know, so he has never had a job other than wrestling. That was a nice lower blow right there by uh, by Spring, and I see he's starting to take control. He was working the leg areas there and the lower back, and he worked his he was working over uh, Billy's back into the side of the ring there earlier, and uh, the lower back is I don't know if he's setting something up or or he's just more or less found the weak spot and kind of wearing down. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Nice, nice, nice monkey flip. And he goes for the cover, but he can't run without doing that. He hooked the leg. Definitely, if you want to get the pinfall in the match, definitely have to hook your leg. Whether, if you're not hooking the leg, definitely get more odds of him kicking out. I would say that both these young men have a pretty good basis for the, the basics, is what I'm trying to say. They, 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 they hook the leg, they make the cover. Oh, wait a minute now, what have we got going on here? Oh no, he saw. It. Thank goodness. No great ring presence there by Ring, knowing where he's actually trying to take that advantage with the referee good catch, and that's one thing you risk in there when you're putting your feet on the ropes. Yeah, it can give you a great advantage in the match with the referee catch. That's you right. Pretty much pointless. That is exactly right. And you see now, Lit, uh, boy, a little worse for wear now. And he, you know, these guys have been going hard. I mean, th this has been a hard match. They have not stopped. You don't see these guys walking around. I mean, they started a little slow. But they've been going full speed now for quite a while. I mean, you know. Eight minutes or so. Well, you know, I mean, people say, boy, these are good matches. This, that, you know, if you, the average man gets the bar fight is about 30 seconds, you know. And everybody's blowing wind. And, you know, these guys have been doing this now for, you know, like you said, up to about eight minutes now. And, and uh, you just got you got to train several hundred hours to be able to be, be in there for eight minutes like that. Oh, make that kind of fun. And both of them look like, uh, you know, they're not, they're not he men yet, but they're working on their bodies, and you can tell them. Oh, definitely, definitely. You guys are going to be great here in wrestling in the next few years, too. Can't miss kicks. Oh, there you go. And uh, Billy Litt, now three nice arm drags, and, and and Ring getting a little frustrated there, trying to trying to get his senses back to get to a the side of the road. Good presence, though, to try to get there, but he just didn't make it. Good match. High-paced action here. Slowing down a little bit as they yeah they're starting to, they're starting to get a little tired the gas tank's starting to get a little empty. Ring can barely stand up now. I mean he's been going now a long time here in the ring. But I think that's going to catch the better of him here with it. What do we have here? Oh, cross body, cross body, cross body. Oh, he rolled him over. Oh wow, that was a nice turn. That was a nice turn. You know what? I think I saw. I could see on that other monitor right there that he might have had his trunks, but I don't know. I couldn't tell. Here is your winner, Showtime, Terry Ring! There it is. That's a hard you place see to it. come up from. Goodness job by the referee. Look at that. Good camera worker. One, two, you see shoulder down. Mm -hmm. And now it's up there to count of two and almost three quarters. Shoulder is just a hair off the mat, but that's far enough for the referee's concern. Shane Williams, this is a dogfight right now between these two men. It's a test of strength, if you will. But Damian Wayne is not giving up. Ah, oh, there he is. Wow. Up off of his back, up to his knees, to his feet almost. Oh. And King Shane cuts him off. Now he's going to cut him back off. win from Damian Wayne. Now Damian Wayne with the momentum going to pick him up, belly to back up. Come on! Oh. It drops him. Oh, man. Nasty impact there. That right there will rock your world. Both men back to a vertical base. And Damian oh. Wayne with the upper hand. It's a little bit faster and a little bit quicker than the King Shane Williams. Look out now. Ducks a clothesline. Coming off the far side. Caught for a crossbody. But Damian Wayne thinking something else. 
Got him up. Oh, did you see that? All the way up for a vertical suplex. He's holding him up there. Did you see that? He's got more air time than air. Oh, man. Oh, what an impact. Holy cow. Going for the cover. Impressive. Simply impressive. But it took his toll on Damien as well. Can he get that pit? Uh, He's going up. All the way up, all going to the middle rope. Look up! Oh, oh. He missed it. Shane Williams rolled out of the way last second. May have saved just this matchup right him. there for a moment. That right there was just sheer instinct because Shane Williams in the last second saw him instinctively moved out of the way. And you can tell right now, both men, worse for wear, both of them down as referee Brandon Cox makes his count. Looks like Shane Williams is going to be the first up to his feet. Damian Wayne is still recovering from that leg drop here. Both ends going to pick him back up for the assist, but Wayne maybe play a little possum and a solid strike there. Ooh, what a solid chop. Here we go now. Hooks him. We'll use the ropes as a springboard and a DDT. Wow. That's about all she wrote. Here's a cover. One, One. two, three. Oh, oh man. How close was that? I thought Damian Wayne was over with. I thought it was in sync before with Shane Williams kicking out. That right there was just sheer, sheer ring presence because all he knew was that he had to get him up off the map. The King all the way up. Maybe going for the fifth drop. <laughs> oh, man, this has been patented in the past. He eat him up. Oh! oh. To the face. And you've seen an object fly out of his mouth. It could have been a tooth. I think that was a molar. Damian Wayne. All the way upstairs, look out. Then we've seen this before. Maybe go for the heart, for the elbow oh. drop. That may be it. Cover. Go ahead and get the structure One, now. two, three. Damian Lane advances to the finals. A valiant effort. Here's your winner, Damian Wayne. And with that, Damian Wayne becomes the second man to enter the finals of the Smoky Mountain Cup, along with Jeff Connolly. Anything goes as we need to for the tick, as it doesn't matter. We don't want to title that video. We know what it's about. It's about that right there. We don't want to check that shit. Anything goes. It's a street fight, a battle that begins. Ladies and gentlemen, right here. Right there. There it is. Here we go. Now, this can end anywhere. Just for a reminder, it can end right here in the ring. It can end back in the locker room. It can end on Fort Henry Drive, on East Stone Drive. It can even end on Kings Eastman. We were advised to have the police department notified that this was a sanctioned event. Oh my God. And unfortunately, Elliot over here can get involved. I didn't think I needed to point that one out here that uh, he is standing ringside. But, yeah. Something looked familiar, even though it was totally different. <laughs> Jason Kincaid is always a unique individual. He's never disappointed in the body of the champion. 575 days, he's not champion. <laughs> but, another sense looking at him. Come on. Come on. Come on. But it's totally legal. It is. Unfortunately. It is. Oh, Sigmund going for a ride there. Some more 
side of the table. Oh no, it's time to tee off. Sigma's got his Four. teeth Oh, oh man. he just knocked one down the fairway. Oh man. And now it's time for the chip shot. Sigma batters oh. up. Well, that's gotta hurt. Good grief. I don't think he made the green in two with that one. And now it'll be time to put it in. Oh, oh. he hit it by the skull. Far for the course. Now he, he definitely got a birdie on that one. Now is he gonna roll it back into the green? No. Jason Kincaid's probably seeing some birds on there. He may be busted open after that, too. And now he said, Come on, Jason! Get right here in front of our Come house, on. Get up! I tell you what, this is uh, kind of a, uh, I'll say, for condition, if I do say so myself. Oh, well, he's got him in the ears, oh. throwing it right to the eyes. All legal, 100% legal. Jason Kincaid knows how to break those rules. The good thing is, I did call Geek Squad. My two computers are protected over here. So. Plus, I had the uh, extended board the the same. Going into the chairs here. And there's a right hand by Jason Kincaid. Now, look at this. The fans are happy to be moved out of the ringside area because they have destroyed the chairs over here with the conference on this side. Now, that should knock to the floor here. Man, this needs to stay in the ring. Now, look out. Oh, and a battle back and forth. Right, Cooper, you're going to get a front row ticket here. No, they're going to run past us. Thank no. God for that. Oh, good Lord. And now they're right behind us. And unfortunately, they don't have a monitor tonight. So we'll have to turn around here and see the action. And, oh, no. Not for the product tables. Hey, Blondie, better watch out over there. They're going to get it. Oh, they're going to go outside. Oh, man. Right into the door. And they're battling all over the place here. All right, guys. They're coming back in their direction. We're going to now. Sigmund in some pain. The kid Kenny's stalking his prey. here to do is to count to three oh, at the end. Give it back. And got a, he's got a tag. A license. He's got a tag. From Kentucky number is. Off the oh. skull. He bit it in half. Come around. It's false count anywhere. One, two, and a kick out. Two count. The kick out at two. And look out. Look out. Jason trying to grab the chair. The sink that stands on it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Vertical, I'm going to block it, go for a vertical suplex. Kincaid blocks, oh no, on the outside. Oh. A vertical suplex on the floor. He shook the rafters in this place. That, oh, ew, ew. Yeah, I definitely felt the impact on that one. Man. Cover here on the floor. One, two, and a kick out. Notice how that wrestle stand back in. Oh, he's balling this. You know, I was sort of wondering where he was. Didn't really miss him, though. Because he's staying on the total opposite side of the ring now. Oh, he can't, he can't grab the tag. I think that tag's expired. Oh, and Kincaid's going to get the steps. The wooden steps here. Go give him. They're going to line him up here. Look out. Oh, he's going to throw him into a goal blocked by Sigmund. Dangerous round here off the steps. Throws him back into the ring. Maybe for a moment we see some relief. Oh, and He's got the chair. Oh man, slides it in. Jason Cook was 
Texas. That's a smart move. Good move by Jason Kincaid. The sinker now with the haymakers to the back of the hand. And they're going to stand on the face of Kincaid. This is the kind of match that will definitely shorten a man's career. Absolutely. Oh, cheer shot to the rib cage. Oh, no. Sigma's got some bad intentions. Since that cheer conveniently there in the turnbuckles. Never a good sign when you see that thing pop up there. Oh, oh, oh man! The chair! The chair shattered! Oh my goodness! Something oh. flew into the front row. Yep, that was definitely a piece of that chair. One, two, Sigmund going for the pin there. Only got a two count. And Subway Jason can go over and kick out of that. Really? Oh, oh. That's all there is to it. Somebody's getting it. And yeah, it may be happening right now. Kincaid has his way. Ropes. Springboard. Oh, and Sigmund in the chair. On his back for the cover. One, two, and a two. Jason Kincaid with the eject button on the seat here. And Elliot Russell will get on the apron. This is not a tag match. This is not a tag match. Ripper in the corner. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at the look at Jason Kincaid. The aggression. Kincaid maybe going for a swing shot. Oh, Sigmund goes out of the way. Nobody home. And Huffman Hart with a German suplex. I love it. Sigmund certainly does the shit again. Trifecta. He got always going for another. A four. No. And he's still holding on. Number five. five. A bridge. One. Two. The shoulder was up at two and a half. How? Again, how does he kick out of that? Strong determination and an act of God is the only way I can do this at this point. Sitting all the way up top. Oh, it's a right hand. And now, as the guys have beat the proverbial crap out of each other from the opening bell, they dangle up above the ring. Career short. Life short. Oh, and Kincaid crashes hard. Sigma, let me go for the head bump. Got it, got it. Good grief. And man knocks Sigma loopy. One, two, three. Oh, and kicked out again. And these guys have kicked out of everything. Fans of Kingsport behind Jason Kincaid now. Let's go, Jason! 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 let us go jason 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 let us go
This match will go on all night long. But what in the world? What, what is this? He's not no. going to. Oh my They're God. not going to do that. No way. No way. Oh my God. No. Oh. That almost cut Sigmund in half. Oh, 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 oh. Austin West is staring. But is it at that? Can he make the clapper? One, two, three. And still, the NWA's talking about the heavyweight champion, Jason Nuggett. Accompanied by his manager, the Palestinian brain, Eddie Creechman. And their opponents first from Buzzard Creek, weighing 300 pounds, Stan, the man, Stasiak. And from Indianapolis, Indiana, 243 pounds, Bulldog, Don Kent. Accompanied in the ring by their manager, pretty boy, Floyd Creechman. This is a duration match. At the end and the conclusion of our television time, it's over. Whether we have a decision or not, it's over. The bell sounds. Creechman standing there at the corner. Eddie Creechman at the other corner. A headlock applied by Stan the Man Stasiak on Dory Funk. Oh, brutal punch to the forehead. Terry and Dory comes back with one himself. And there comes Kent into the ring. Compliments of Dory Funk Jr. Look at Funk going to work on him. Wow. Let's get it into the ring the hard way. I see both the Sheik and Stan Stasiak periodically looking over here at this cage. They know, and you fans know why they're watching this cage. They're going to be inside of this cage, the Sheik and Stan Stasiak. And is that going to be something to see? Well, inside this gentlemen, brand felt, new cage. Uh, I felt a little comfort inside this cage, but I don't know. Anytime you have the Sheik, Stan the Man, Stasiak, Terry Funk, there's a big door out here, Terry. Do you feel comfortable? Uh, maybe if you put a couple of locks on that thing, I might. Although they could crawl over the top if they wanted to. Yes, they could. With their uh, abilities, they could do most anything. Look out, a big knee right into the midsection of Dory Funk by Bulldog Kent. He picks him up in a body slam. And that's why the ring has been sagging in the middle all afternoon. The Sheik is in there now. The crowd is going wild. They love this man in the ring, Terry. I never thought I'd see anything like this in wrestling. Oh, when I heard about this, I went crazy. I just couldn't believe it. What a great sign it is. The news got all the way out to Kelly. Darn right it did. And they tried to sign it for Los Angeles. And they tried to sign it for San Francisco. But they got it here. The match with Stasiak and the Sheik. In the cage. Chuck, I understand the Sheik has his own form of the hard punch, am I correct? Well, if he does, Terry, I have not seen that, but it could have happened in the last month or so as I've been away. If he does, that's got to be giving Stan Stasiak a few nightmares, because he sure knows what that hard punch can do to other people. Oh, absolutely. I think pro wrestling, if you know you've got an opponent coming up and he has something, I think you have to have something And knowing the Sheik as well as you and I both know him, I'm sure he's going to come up with something. Of course, there's the ever-present fear of the fire whenever the Sheik steps into the ring. Oh, and once again, that big elbow smash to the underneath the chin of Bulldog Kent, and the Sheik pounds the head down of Stan the Man Stasiak has finally made contact with him. He continues to pound the head of Stasiak. Here they come. They're coming towards the cage. Look out. Watch out. We're getting out of here. The Sheik and Stasiak coming after that cage. 
Stasiak is on the inside. The Sheik on the outside trying to get in. Stasiak wants out. The Sheik wants in. We're in a horrible position here. I don't know how to get out because they blocked the door. We can't get out. The door's jammed shut, I think. He's coming over the top. Uh oh, here comes the chair. Watch out, let's get out of here. The Sheik is aiming that chair at Stan Stasiak. Oh, Bulldog Kid, look at the action on the floor as well. And watch out, Stasiak is getting near us. Maybe he thinks the Sheik won't throw it if he's behind us. Come on, don't get behind us. The Stasiak can be put in that same caliber as being a maniac. Well, there comes the chair. The Sheik is all the way at the top of the cage. We do not have a monitor. I don't know what you fans at home are seeing. But don't take your eyes off the television screen. This is the brand new reinforced cage you're going to see these two inside of. Ladies and gentlemen, there's action going on the floor. Is that is what you can see? Dory Buck and Bulldog Kit are fighting. The Sheik is standing on the top railing. Stand the man Stasiak is inside the ring. Our time is expiring, Terry. And this is a duration match. Our time is expiring. Show Fire Ant was taken out by Gekido. He is on his way to the hospital. He is not going to be in that 10-man tag later on tonight. We, we don't know what will become of the 10-man tag, but what we know is Fire Ant will not be a participant in it. Something happened backstage before the pre-show even began uh, this afternoon here in Philadelphia. We don't know what it is, but uh, time will tell right now. The two most devious men, perhaps. Only one will remain when we're done here, Leonard. And you see these two circling. These two did have a contest just about a month and a half ago. Rahway, New Jersey. That's right. It all started up in Ottawa, Canada in March. Uh, Ophidian emerged from the back left with Ultramanus' staff. And that kind of is how this all started. He thought perhaps that's where the power lied. That's where the, the deviosity, is that a word? Deviosity? Deviousness? Correct me on Twitter. Hashtag C-Rex fans worldwide talking about your car source Rex. Be one of them and correct me on my grammar. But right now, Ultramanus is going to correct the snake style of Ophidian Leonard. That's right, we've seen a transformation over the last six months in Ophidian style. It all His started at high noon. That's right, it all started at high noon when he blew that mist into the eyes of his longtime partner, his friend in Omasis. He essentially terminated the Osirian portal, one of the most popular stables in Chakara history, no longer. Now Mantis there got reversed, sidestepped, and just stomped right on the fingers. I think it might be stomping on his wrist. He broke that wrist two summers ago. DDT! Speaking of devious men, shout out to Jake the Snake Roberts. You know, Close personal friend of Cole Cabana, I understand. When you were talking about uh, deviosity there, I thought you were talking about the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Close De enough. Deviousness. Let's, met the Million Dollar Man this afternoon. It was a World Comic Convention. Pleasant, pleasant fellow. Still got the laugh. Not a big fan of back breaks, and neither is Ultra Mantis Black. Ultra uh -oh. Mantis Black. Oh, Uncle mention. Slam! Where's the Patriot when you need him? <laughs> Not enough coverage on the arms there. Of course, this big match out in Chikara, the Chikarmi coming out in full force. And you see the lithe body of Ophidian there bending over, putting a lot of pressure on the back and the neck of Ultramantis Black, and immediately Ultramantis Black fights his way out of that. He knew if he was in that for a long time, the damage would even be further done to the neck and the throat. Absolutely. As has been the focus of Ophidian. Ultra Mantis, uh, or excuse me, Ophidian, very bendy, very agile, but sometimes he literally takes his eye off the ball. He can't see his opponent. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he was unable to see what was going on there, and Ultra Mantis was able to, to fight out of that move, but Ophidian now going to the high rent district, going to the third floor, baby. Taking Looking a, to go to the pay window. Taking a long time. <laughs> Watch out for that arm. Whoa! Splits the uprights. I'm a little early on the football analogies, I'm afraid. But Ultra Mantis now, the great equalizer there. Got him in the corner now, looking to go. Ah! Big double underhook suplex off the top. Desperation move there by Ultra Mantis Black. Will it pay off? 
I don't know if he's gonna have enough in him right now to go for the pin, but this is the opportunity. Ultra Mantis Black needs to turn the tide in this contest, and every single person here at the Trocadero is behind the devious one, but for how long will he be the devious one? Explosion of offense couldn't come at a better time there for Ultra Mantis Black. JB laying down the 10 count, both of them on their feet. Nobody wants to see it end like that. And Ultra Mantis comes out swinging first. Series of chops takes Ophidian down, but Ophidian's up. Mongolian chop style goes Ooh. for a second one. Puts up the block, back to that, that nerve hold of sorts, not too far from the throat. Oh, went to the wall one too many times, Leonard. Shoved into the buckle, Mantis brings him up. What's he got in mind wait for him second, here? Wait a second, cross, this could be Ocean Cyclone style. Very nice! Two count. The shoulders weren't settled at first off the impact of the move on that, that second, that split second, I think, was just enough, Leonard. And that's all it takes. The pain and punishment that has been taken to the neck of Ultra Mantis Black was the difference between moments and a victory. But we're seeing, looking, he's right in the center of the ring. He's going for the praying Mantis bomb. And very wisely there out of Ophidian widens his base, makes it a little bit more difficult for Mantis to take him over. And he's looking to walk on. That Ocean Cyclone's kind of a big match thing. We don't see that every day out of Ultra Mantis, but this no bigger match right here. The world watching. Wait, go on, wait a second. Cosmic Doom for Ophidian. Oh, long two from Jonathan Barber. Somehow, some way, Ophidian realizing the big match atmosphere he's in as well. That's right, it's no coincidence that he planned this sacrifice, the giving up of those masks. Mm -hmm. You know, he was at Wizard World today too, walking around. I didn't see him with those masks. Slithering around, I think is a better, uh, better verb. And there he just uh, dragged to the throat. That's it was right. Working for him earlier. He's going up top, could be going for that double knees as we've seen him connect with before. There you go. Rides him all the way down, almost like an elevator. Coverage on the shoulders, but not hooking the leg, man. Cardinal mistake. And again, who knows what sort of... Oh, a second time! Knee to the throat, essentially. Only two! You know, and I was gonna say, I don't know what's going through the mind of Ophidian. This I don't new, wanna know. All right, this new look, this new persona, if you will. He may not have all of his faculties here. That not hooking the leg the first time. But he went for it a second time, comes in a third time with the knees in the buckle. He won't be welcome in the faculty room at school. Ultraman's looking for a schoolboy there. The impact move's not working, looking to maybe surprise him. But this concentrated attack from the knees of Ophidian to the throat of Ultramantis Black can only go on for so long. I gotta think, Leonard. Only so much punishment one Mantis can take in that back, that foot right to the back of head. That, to, to quote Rilla Monsoon again, concussion city. Yo, uh, somebody told me they once actually thought he was a doctor. Really? <laughs> yes, because he knew, used all those phony medical terms. That's awesome. Now here's, jo there you go, Jonathan Barber getting in proper position there. Perhaps he got a, a taste of his, his best side there at Go Fight Live, but uh, getting right in the face, the, the antenna, as it were, of Ultra Mantis Black to see if he wants to give it up. Yeah, and I don't know what Ophidian had locked in there, but it wasn't locked in very well. Ultra Mantis very easily escapes from that. And again, you're starting to see, uh, kind of in his body language here, like frustration, like, okay, wait a minute, now he's thinking he's got it under control, but where's he going? He's been saying that for about five minutes now. He's he's on the on the floor here, near near the stage area, looking down, going under the ring for something, but no matter what he's doing here, I'm not sure what he has in mind, but you he's know, absolutely positively giving Ultra Mantis a moment to uh, co collect his thoughts here. Now, now and he's slithering got be under the stage built uh, by our, friends, uh, our friend Brendan here. Oh, wait a second. That's right, you gotta be careful on the outside here. It's a 20 count on the floor. It is. He's, a, he is breaking the plane here. Bringing that staff in the ring now. Barber very wisely getting between him now. Getting the staff out of the ring though. Ah, that missed again! That's the third time he's cut, he's delivered he that it, miss to the eye. Wait a second, got him done. Oh, they two! Every time he's done that, Ultra Mantis Black had spelled victory for him. Ah! But that has got to spell defeat for Ophidian. Great Mantis Bob on the top of the head. And good night, Ophidian. That ends the problem that Ultra Mantis Black has with Ophidian. As you mentioned before, Bryce, now on to bigger and better things for Ultra Mantis Black here in Chikara. Let there be no mistake, the most devious man in Chikara is about to have his hand raised. Thank <laughs> you.